We are a one-stop shop for all of your uniform, workwear, branding, safety and promotional items. We have a wide range of brands available in store. We look forward to seeing you guys soon. Get your game face on. Get your game face on. Get your game face on. Game face on. This is the MPNFL Division 1 footy show on the eve of the finals, thanks to Swiv's Locker. The top five signed, sealed and delivered, I'm yours, in the words of the great Stevie Wonder. So it's all set with one round to go. Dramana, find a way, even though they trailed for most of the day. Good effort to win. They didn't play all that well, though. Luke Verma from the Bomb Beach Sharks joins us to talk about that game, a game that got away again for the Sharks against the top three team. Frankston Bombers, well, they're finding some form late in the season. They've won their last two after losing their previous five. Sorrento, too strong for Mornington as the Dogs are set to be relegated. And Frankston YCW put the final nail in the coffin for Rosebud's finals chances in 2019. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a huge show with only one round left before the finals. Remember, get your game face on. Let's talk to our first guest as we welcome him from the Bomb Beach Footy Club. Luke Burma, welcome Luke, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, good to be here. Now, your first year at Bomb Beach, how have you found it? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, obviously been a bit different coming out of the uh, BFL system, but um, I've loved every minute of it, made a lot of good mates, um, and just having fun playing footy again, which is good. What made you get come down to Bomb Beach then? Um, your friends? Or? Yeah, well, I played footy with uh, Trent Dennis Lane and a few others down at um, Sandy, and um, had a good connection with him there, good friends. So I thought I'd follow him down, and yeah, it's been good so far. And Blackers, we need to say welcome to you. We're oh, looking thanks, forward to Dan. the finals. On the eve of the finals, it's uh, going to be fascinating, the final round. We know that it's that the top five is settled, but uh, it's, going to it's be an opportunity for these teams just to keep their good form up. That's right, Dan. And Bomb Beach, obviously, we'll talk about them later, but Bomb Beach and YC will play this week and then they'll probably play in the first final, Dan. So it'll be interesting to see what unfolds. And Adrian Speedy's here from the Mornington Footy Club. Welcome, Adrian. Good to have you with us as well. Yeah, good to be here. No worries at all. Now, you're a bit of a... DJ in your spare time, Luke, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a stitch up, but um, yeah, I don't mind um, DJing every now and then. I've been uh, been doing it for about a couple of years now, just a bit of a hobby, so. And you have been, the records and you yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah, I'll kind of. A couple of my mates like playing golf, so I'm not, I'm not good at that, so I thought I'd give someone else a go and DJing seems to be What sort of music? Hopefully REO, Speedwagon, Chicago, <laughs> Journey from the 1980s. If I or knew more of that yeah, doof, doof, doof yeah, stuff, are you? I'm not sure I really know what that is, but... Um, no, I know you don't. <laughs> Thank you very much, Luke. It's but, showing my age. Yeah, yeah, no, just your generic sort of house type of music, I'm sure. Speedy you knows a bit about that, yeah, so well, yeah. <laughs> all, that, all that stuff that I absolutely hate, Blackers. But anyway... <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're not uh, on your own, Dan. No, no, it's not. But uh, these young guys, I don't know how they can dance to it, but they do. Good luck to them. And uh, anyway, uh, three-time development BNF at the Sandringham Football Club as well. You obviously had a, a good background there. Yeah, it was good. Uh, five years there. I was lucky enough to win a few BNFs and play about 30, 40 senior games of footy there, which was good. So, I mean, it's kind of tough as well being at a line club. Um, each week you sort of don't know if you're getting a game or not just due to the um, the AFL players coming back. But other than that, I really enjoyed it and it was a good experience, so yeah. How much of a better player do you think you became? I think, yeah, I, my development definitely, um, it was good, sorry, it was good for my development. And um, I mean, just being in the system, you know, three times a week, um, getting good feedback from good uh, coaches and I was able to do a pre-season down at St Kilda for one, um, one year. So that was really good for me and good for my development, I thought. Now you're working for the president. Yeah, Matt working Lark. for what are you doing? Matty Lowe. Uh, I'm just down at Low Design and Build, working as an, an estimator. So, right. um, yeah, studying construction management at the moment at RMIT. So having a bit of fun with that, and he's been good to me, giving me an opportunity down there. Yeah, a good week. company, Dan. Yeah, they they do a lot of that. development work along the peninsula. So, yeah. what's a, what's an estimator do? Excuse me, not. Oh, I guess it's some called guesstimating, but um, no, <laughs> we just sort of estimate costs for for what not for the for the projects yeah, for the okay. projects. Yeah, so it's fascinating. No, nah, it's a bit of fun. Now, you started at the Hamden Rovers. They're a well-known club, of course, in this part of the world. Yep. And it's a bit of a look at those days. Tell us a little bit about your experience of being part of that football club. Yeah, it was great fun. I was there since I was about seven years old. So I um, was lucky enough to have my dad coach me sort of growing up through my juniors and had a lot of good mates. And um, growing up through there, we had pretty successful. I think every year we basically played in the grand final. So, yeah, it was good fun. Why were you successful? Because you had so many good players coming through? Yeah, that and good I, coach. I guess I probably should say my dad's coaching. But um, yeah, <laughs> Why was he a good coach? Um, I guess he just sort of cared about all the players. But yeah, you're probably right. We did have a few good players coming through as well. So it made it a bit easier. Did he ever give you a spray in a nice way then? Uh, probably, yeah. I'd say he did. But um, that was all good fun. 
Now, Adrian Speedy from the Mornington Footy Club is with us as well. Now, Adrian, Balura Junior Clubs, tell us about those days. Um, yeah, so I'm a Mornington kid and grew up there. So, yeah, Balura was um, just with all the schoolmates, just um, three to six teens, a few flags. Um, yeah, it was good times, good mates. Good what? little setup down there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good little setup. Um, there's a lot of clubs in junior clubs in Mornington. So, yeah, um, yeah Balura just the one to go to. It's quite amazing, Dan, because you've got Bloora, you've got South Mornington, you've got um, the Tantai. What's it, what are they called down there at the Tantai? Yeah, I think Tantai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got Mornington Footy Club as well. Too many junior clubs, do you think, mate? Oh, I'm not too sure. But... What do you think, Adrian? It's good many? for the under 18 for Mornington. Yeah. They're usually yes. a strong, strong team. I know we were um, when I was under 18s there. We won, I think, two in a row. So um, it's good to get the juniors up through 18s and then hopefully on to senior footy. I mean, as a, a junior club, how do you try and attract these players? I mean, what do you need to do? Is it what you produced in the past? Um, is it the culture? I, I think mean, it's, how do, you, um, do you have to go out and sort of sell yourself a bit to schools yeah, around I, the area? I think it's a bit like that, just senior players getting around the junior clubs and um, taking a few drills. I mean, it doesn't take much to get involved around the community. Mm. So. Get them um, down to the senior club on a Saturday. Yeah, they get parents involved and all that sort of stuff, Dan. Your closest mate at the club is Tom Simpson. You think yes. Of yeah, so he um, has a few had a few years off footy. He uh, was in the Frankston system and then decided to have family. So I've decided to drag him back to footy this year and um, I think he's enjoying it. So, yeah. Now, Goose, he's mad. Uh, we love him. You get on very well with him. Why yeah. do you get on well with him? Yeah, we all get on very well with him. Um, I mean, you can see by his shows on Saturday that he's a bit of a character on and off the field. He likes to um, get in um, a few people's faces. But, no, he's good in the way he directs and tells you um, what you're doing wrong when you're doing it. So, um, yeah, no, he's handy to have around the club just for the information. He is a funny man. Oh, yeah. oh he, he loves is. it. He is. Just uh, are there times when he's trying to be serious and he ends up unintentionally making a funny remark and he might be ready to have a bit of a spray, you've had a bad day and you're trying not to laugh? And how do you sort of conceal that? Yeah, he's got his, he's just like most coaches, he's got a couple of players that um, he likes to, you know, pick on in his own certain way. Um, but that's just Goose. Um, he loves to have a laugh. So he doesn't take anything too seriously. He moves on pretty quick. Air conditioning, you install air conditioners, is that right, for your job? Yeah, I do uh, do my own thing, but I'm up for working in Kilsyth for, um, just for a bloke, uh, King right. Cooling, so. In Kilsyth? Yeah, so I travel up there every day. It's a fair way, of a hike. It? So um, you, I mean, just on that, I mean, is now your busiest time because people are getting ready for summer, or? Should be, but no one's that smart. No, they're not, are they? No, it's always last minute. Yeah, so it'll be October, November, up. you'll be flat out, won't you? Yeah, Christmas time. No, no doubt about that. Now, talking of the goose, there's a brand new show every Saturday morning at 8.30, live from the Garney Cafe, Benton Square, Mornington. Paul Wilson hosting it. But he doesn't really get much of a word in, Paulie, because it's left to the goose and sometimes to Paddy. So it is live and loose with Paddy and the goose and special guest this week, league legend and crib point coach Steve Hamill, fresh from a final round win in second division to end their season for the Magpies over Tyab. Now, Dramana, guys, found a way, even though they trailed for most of the day. It was a low-scoring contest. They beat your boys, Luke, in Bond Beach. You'd be disappointed with that because this was one that you probably needed to win and should have won. And everyone's been a bit critical of the fact you've struggled against the top three teams. So I'm sure at the end of the match, you would have been thinking that's one that got away. Yeah, definitely we thought it was one that got away. I mean, it's probably our own fault as well. We kicked... Four goals, 14. So if we kick a bit straighter earlier, I mean, we would put a bit of scoreboard pressure on, which we're unable to do. So, yeah, disappointing. We couldn't get the job done. But, you know, I think once we get four quarters of football together, it will be pretty hard to beat. It was a pretty hopefully. tough day for footy. Yeah, it was. It? I mean, terribly tough. You know, I was obviously out um, at the outer well, east. it was almost and, hailing out there at yeah, Berry early in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and sheeting rain. And, yeah. And then it started hailing, I think, at Somerville in the second half, and then the sun came out. I'm sure you would have had similar conditions too. Yeah, similar you? conditions. Yeah, it wasn't great. It was probably about a six-goal breeze going one way, but both sides probably couldn't capitalise as much as they would have liked. Now, you'll get a lot of your Frankston players back, won't you, which will help your cause yep. come finals time. Yep. They're obviously not going to be playing in the finals. So yep. that, that'll give you a bit more depth, won't it? Yeah, it'll be good. We get, um, obviously, uh, Mitch Gent as well back from Casey. So 
Um, he straightens us up as well, just as Bo and uh, Lockie Gill do. So it'd be good for us. And, um, yeah, looking forward to the final series. Yes, as mentioned, pretty tight game. Bomb Beach led at the first and third changes. Uh, Germana led at halftime in the final siren, so they managed to get the job done again. Blackers, Ethan missed a consistent Johnston. Another three goals. Team of the year, a chance. Blackers, do you reckon? Oh, especially as a small forward, Dan. Um, he has been pretty consistent along with his little mate in Sam Fowler. Yeah, yes, he's, he's been wonderful for them, Fowler, this year. Uh, Gertz has been injured, but he, he should be back as well, so... Those smaller players, those speedy players, um, boys, Especially talking of speedy, I mean, they're the, they're the ones that have really helped this team, haven't they? Just made them look different. Yes. Well, they've opened up the opposition sides and, and that's what they've been able to do against the Pines, isn't it, Dan? That their fleet-footedness and their quick ball movement has been able to weave their magic through the Pines' defence. Terry, Mr. Nice Guy Wheeler, the Dramana captain, he probably doesn't get the respect he deserves, certainly from outside. Uh, the Dramana Footy Club, he had back-to-back -back best on grounds and Dramana going for seven on the trot if they beat the Doggies this week. Your last game of the year, Adrian. Uh, do you reckon you can beat them? I mean, it looks like you'll be relegated next year, which is going to be tough for the club, um, but it'd be nice to win the year on a good note, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd like to create an upset. Um, we guess we did against YC, so there's no reason why we can't. We're putting, you know, three quarters of footy together. We just can't put the fourth, and that's where um, our downfall is being this year. How are you feeling about being re relegated for next year? Something uh, the club's never had happened to them in their yeah, long Goose history hasn't, and proud history. Goose hasn't talked a lot about it. Um, he's just saying it's a lot of outside noise at the moment, but, you know... It's reality. It now, is reality right? now, so, yeah, yeah we've got to just go stride by stride and just take what comes to us, really. Now, thanks to Frankston RSL, the Frankston Bombers, after losing five in a row, won their last couple. It was a good win on the weekend against Edith Bell Aspendale and uh, one of my favourite players, certainly when he played at the Bulldogs, I loved him. Blackers, Jared Spindles Grant, best on ground, kicking four off the wing. I reckon he's had a pretty good year, Spindles. He's been very, very consistent, um, Grant, and he's been one of the blokes that has kept this side just slowly ticking over. He's been consistently kicking three or four goals, Dan. And that's what he's needed to do. He's just a yeah. bit inconsistent last, last year. He's certainly but, inconsistent in his AFL career. But, but in saying that, um, he was probably getting used to the tempo and all that. And most yeah. guys that come out of AFL football and straight into the country football take a year to adapt. Jack the Pug Mac. I don't know why we're calling him a pug. Is he? He did. looks like a pug. He's got a face <laughs> like a pug. He also booted three for the Bombers. Good head for radio like me, but I'm sure he can play good footy. As it's shown by this, also booted three for the Bombers, raising money for the charity. It's okay not to be okay, which uh, the Frankston Bombers have done a lot for. They probably uh, were the club that were instrumental in introducing the charity yeah. to uh, make people more mindful of mental health. Uh, $100 per goal alongside Cam O'Neill, who donated $50 per goal. Meg Patinsky, part of the Game Face team, caught up with Jack Post. Just following the pug right now. Have a chat with us. We know you played a really great game today. All right, we'll let him do his hair. Fix your hair. It's pretty. Three goals today. Yes, three goals. Yeah. Very good effort. Tell us about it. Uh, the first one was just a snap uh, from about 45, uh, and then the next one was pretty much in the goal square. So then the last one was around the corner. The ice the game. So. No, you, don't, you don't like to brag about it. Tell us why. Come on, that's pretty nah, good. Nah, I'm just happy to be playing. So happy to be getting, kicking goals for the charity. So that's twelve hundred dollars raised today. So that's well good. done. What a great, great effort. Thank you. So tell us about your game. How, how'd you go? Besides your three goals. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. The wind, obviously, the, the rain and all that was pretty good. So it didn't really rain as much. As Obviously, it was meant to, so no, it was pretty good. Didn't make finals, which is a bit disappointing, but you guys have come back in um, towards the end of the season, um, which is exciting. So next season will look good for you guys? Yeah, we've had a lot of injuries, so we've obviously played a few young players. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited for next year and hopefully we can play finals again. All right, well, thanks for chatting in with us, even though we had to chase you up. Just on Cam O'Neill, Blackers. Yeah, so uh, his they, last game, I believe. Yeah, so it was his last game for the club. Cam's uh, been an outstanding servant of the club, uh, being the reserves captain and um, playing a handful of senior games. But his body's just starting to let him get down at 26 or 27. Really? That's, um, he's only a young man still, but his hips and his, um, yeah, his body's letting him down.
It's not good, is it, that you're, no. you're gone at 26 or 27? That's right. But he and his dad... How old were you, Blake, when you gave it up? 36. Gee. Yeah, but I was gone... I, I was gone before that, but unfortunately, yeah, anyway, cut a long story short, I ended up playing one more year because we lost a, a lot of players after winning yeah. the flag. Um, so I stuck around for one more year. I probably should have retired. How old are you? Like? 23. 23. Yeah. yeah. Your body's obviously still in outstanding shape. You wouldn't want to be finished at 26, 27. Well, hopefully not. No, touch wood, I'll be all right at 26, 27. So see so we go. What about you, Adrian? 25. Yeah, well, I mean, your body's still in great shape. You'd like to think you're at least in yeah. another five or six. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's very unfortunate for players when their body finishes. Well, that's so what really happens, important. Dan. Unfortunately, it happens to all of us. Time oh. waits for nobody, Dan. And uh, Cam's been an outstanding servant. His dad, Jamie's a life member of the club, played in the 1991 Premiership side. Um, so the O'Neills have done wonderful work for the Frankston Bombers Footy Club. And the Bombers have a winnable game to finish the season against Rosebud, who they beat last time round by seven points. And we all know injuries have decimated their season. They're trying to find out yeah. how many they've got, just haven't been able to get that information. So they might... yeah, that, that, that has been a real issue for them. I mean, Bo Mustin said to me five or six weeks ago when I started doing the injury rounds that if we can get them all back when they just started that long losing streak, I think we're a massive chance. But the problem has been black because they haven't been able to get them back. Yeah, they've given... Um a lot of opportunities to younger guys that have been playing in the seconds for a long time. Mm. And those guys have really stood up and done quite well. And Bo will stay as coach, do you think? Yeah, I'm not too sure what they're going to... The body hasn't for. allowed him to play no. much footy. But he and Nathan Loney are two really good football people. Um, and, you know, if, you, if you've got injuries, you've got injuries, Dan. And unfortunately, in, in a tight competition... If you haven't got your best side on the park, it's sometimes hard and wins get away from you, Dan. Well, i got Bowman, of course, the former Hawthorne Bulldogs yeah. player to come and play and uh, Bowman knew him from his days at Box Hill. Yeah. And, and Alex, he hasn't played as much, played much footy either and Alex Harnett, of course, the start for Frankston. He's been playing down at the Dolphins and yeah. whether he comes back and plays a full year at them, so... Now... Thanks to Excalp, let's look at the Sorrento win. They were too strong for Mornington. We mentioned the dogs are set for relegation. Tell us about this game, Adrian. You were really good in the first half. Just couldn't quite continue on in the second half. Couldn't yeah, sustain it. we matched them in the first half. I mean, uh, it was a blow in a gale. So uh, I think we were two points up, something at half time. And then Tapscock on the end of it, kick four in like five minutes or something. So, um, yeah, you can just tell the class they've got, even in those they've conditions. Got, yeah. Um, the way they moved the ball um, was just way too good for us in the end, and they just ran over us. I think they're the overseas players won't be back. No. As will be a bit of a struggle at this stage. But well, they're still on top of the ladder. Yeah, they're they still are. winning games, and, and their A grade players are playing really good football, Dan. Yeah, they've been terrific, haven't they? I mean, mm. Tap's got to do what he did to turn the game. I mean, look, he's a very hard player to stop, isn't he? I mean, yeah, no, he's yeah. played a fair bit of AFL footy. The yeah. body didn't allow him to well, play you, more. He's a high draft pick. You look at Loudon, you look at Tapscott, you look at Mitch Hallahan. Mm. They, they could be starting three in any VFL side. No doubt. And Gibson didn't play either. Yeah. No, I mean, he hasn't played for a long time. No yeah. James Hallahan, and we know how good for Hulk is. He's such a dangerous player. So uh, they're, they're looking pretty good, and... But you, you must be happy that you've been pretty competitive in most games. Just a bit frustrated that you haven't we been are, able to win It has enough. been a frustrating year. Like I said, we have been in um, most games up to a certain point in the second half and then all it takes is a 10, 15, even a quarter lapse by us and that's just where our downfall's been. Um, but, you know, we're a young list. We've had a heap of injuries, so... Um, it's only take positives out of it and move on to next year. Now, for Hulky talking of... He was on live and loose with Paddy and the Goose at the Garnies morning. And he only kicked two. Do you think uh, he had that particular Well, he would have had to get up early. Involvement? Yes. He would have had to get up early to come up and see Paddy and the Goose. And maybe that... He would have loved it, though. Yeah, and then he... Uh, did he go to... Was it at Mornington? Yep. The game? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so then he had to hang around. He might have had a, um, a breakfast with the Goose. Probably would have. No doubt he would have. And would have, uh, would have been interesting to see who would have got the first word in and the last word in. Grand final rematch this week. We'll be there for Game Face, one of the biggest rivalries in the comp. And, of course, last time they met was a, a wonderful victory to Pines, but Sorrento had a lot of injuries. And uh, well, then I don't think big... Pines are, are travelling as well as they were then, but even then, Blackers, I remember you saying at the time, 
you didn't think they were going all that well. You well, thought that they got away in the last quarter because well, they did. Renato didn't have any men. That, that's right. James Hallahan did his knee that yeah. day. and um, Yeah, and I, I don't think the Pines have really hit their straps at all. I think the side that's really starting to come now, Dan, is, is YCW. Yeah, they're looking great. Uh, you're very good, Blackers, aren't you? Because nudge, nudge, wink, wink, uh, you must have had your ears burning or you must have had your eyes burning because we've gone right on to the Frankston YCW putting the nail in the coffin for Rosebud's finals chances. Yeah, talk some rubbish. Thanks to SBC Performance. Ironically, the last team to beat Frankston YCW is Rosebud, and the Stonecats look to make it four in a row leading into the finals if they beat Bond Beach. And Chris Holcomb did write them off, even though he said it was a long, long time ago. But he said they were cooked. Boys, he probably did. eight or nine, even ten weeks ago. They look good, though, don't they, Blake? Yeah, I think they do. And um, it'll be interesting to see, you'll talk about it in a minute, whether Street and Credlin are able to play. Yeah, it'll be interesting because... Richmond are on top of the ladder. That's right. And the other aspect, too, Luke, is you play them... You see it happen occasionally, but not all the time. You play them two weeks in a row. Mm, we Good do. thing or bad thing? Oh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think um, it gives us a bit of a dress rehearsal. If anything goes wrong, we can fix it the next week. And um, I don't think we're going to change too much. We just want to go in and hopefully create a bit of a, a winning environment, winning culture. So, you know, got our tails up going into finals. So I don't think we change too much. Eventually, you know, yeah. What would you do as coach, Blake? Oh, it's, it's really hard, Dan. Mm. I mean, it's happened to me uh, a number of times and it's really hard to um, – sometimes you need to win that game to, to make finals and then if you make it, um, then you've got to back it up again the next day, next week um, against the same opposition. So, yeah, it's a tough one. You're hiding to nothing in a lot of ways, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, the week after is the most important one, isn't it? That's right. You don't want to uh, go too early, do and you? And I think uh, – do Richmond have a buy – in the last round? Of, yes. Is this the last round of AFL this week or next week? Next week. Next week, I think. Yeah, yeah yes. next week. So hopefully they can get straight in that team. Mm. You'd, you'd hope he'd be allowed well, to play. Although, how important is I he think to Richmond got a, VFL? I think he's very important. They, yeah. they may need him, of course. Is it 11 or 12 games, Dan? I think that you can't play any more than 12 games, I think. I don't think Credlin's played 12, has he? No. So he, he's very important to that side. He just gives them structure at centre-half back. So it's going to be a fascinating game. Can't wait. Now, um, Blackers, ask me a question. Henry Vine? Yeah. Hulk's asked. Ask me, ask me who he is. Who's Henry Vine? I have absolutely no idea. Here's the video. And here are the team sheets, mate. All re written for you. All ready to go. Ready to go, mate. No, uh, no carrying on this week. All good to go. Who's Henry Vine? He's, a new ones, he's playing ones for the first time today. The Lachlan Williams is not there. He's not there. I'll let you park. Yes, that's right. I remember that now. Uh, I get a bit pumped up about uh, not Seeing new names, Dan. Well, not so much new names, Blake. It's just team sheets. I know it's local footy. I know the clubs do their best. I know they're all volunteers. But I do a lot of homework and I, I like to get it right. Well, you do do it. And I know right. I don't expect them to get it right for me, but I want to get it right for myself and get it right for game face. And, and I didn't know who he was. But Dan. he's obviously going very well. He's playing good footy. Yeah. He has been... A major reason why they've done so well. Well, he's been, out of, forward. he's been able to come into the ruck and push Hughes forward, and that's mm. the big, been the big thing that's really helped with their structures. Have you got enough height to counter all their tall forwards? Yeah, Is I think we points? do. Yeah, we've got Benny McLean back. He's there. been great. Yeah, he's he? been really good for us. What about Gary Carpenter? Did he hurt his knee the other weekend? Uh, yeah, he played on the weekend though, and I think he's going all right. And we have just got Owen Hewlett back as well, who had a few weeks off. So yeah, he's yeah, been think, injured. Hasn't yeah, he? I think we've got enough tools to cover him. So yeah. Peninsula safety and work where ladder, one round to go. I don't think Cerrito can be replaced at the top of the table. Pines in second. Still not sure about how they're going, Blackers, but uh, if they get all their players back, they might cause some damage. Obviously, one more week left for Guy Hendry, and I know that Paddy Swain was very disappointed. It was really good to see Aaron Edwards kick six last yeah. week. He hasn't had too many big bags this no, year. No, that was probably second, his biggest yeah. uh, bag of six. So equal best for the season. He's had three mm. in one game, and the other games have predominantly been two and one. They match up really well against Sorrento, so it's going to be a big challenge yeah. down there. Can't wait. It's going to yeah. be a great day. It always is a great day. They've got a huge rivalry in the competition now, and they've won their last four against Sorrento. So they've got the wood on them, but uh, Sorrento would love to win before the finals and give themselves a bit of a leg up going into their first week in a couple of weeks' time. Dramana, how good have they been? They continue to win. Franks and YCW are fourth, Bomb Beach are fifth. We've spoken about the fact they play each other this week. 
Rosebud, I still reckon it's been a good year. I mean, they've just fallen away late in the season. Young team. Yeah. Uh, but they'll rue some of those close losses. Yeah. And they they dropped, I think, the first three, Dan. And then yeah. they had a really good patch where they got a bit of and momentum. They, they got belted early and they've sort of been chasing their percentage, haven't they? Like yes. Bit. Yeah. But I think it's been a good year for Nick and, and the boys down there. And... Um, They'll hopefully get some good recruits in the off-season and then go again and hopefully make the finals. Frankston Bombers finishing the season well, man. Well, they, they could end up finishing sixth, they the could. Bombers, if they, they win on the weekend against... And is that a Bay. pass, if they do that? Well, it's better than last year. Um, I think at the start of the year, they would have, uh, like every side would have aimed to make the finals, but... Um, and their we, talent is good enough if they're all up and about, but the injury... That's right. This has been so, horrific. yeah, it has. It's probably been as bad as any, any yeah. club, Dan. Mount Eliza, disappointing year for them after finishing yeah. third last year. Got some work to do, haven't they? Yeah, unfortunately, they lost a lot of people in the off season, and um... some might come back. And Edie Asp, of course, we know that uh, their travails have just been uh, one hiccup yeah. after another, but they've been pretty competitive in most games. But yeah. their big issue has been not so playing four quarters. Mount Eliza and Edith Vale both played finals last year, Dan, yeah. and are sitting ninth and eighth. Uh, just indicates how tight the comp is in Mornington, of course, on the bottom, but I won't uh, talk about the wall, Adrian. Uh, ambience events and catering goal kicking in Division 1. Lead for Hockey 2 to go to 71. He'll win the title comfortably. Uh, Jackson Calder kicked a couple to move to 56. He's been and, fantastic, Swedes, hasn't he? He it. has. Um, for a young man who uh, is probably your, your main target down there week in, week out, they put the opposition best defender on him and he still keeps on doing well. He does. He works them up the ground and then doubles back. And um, yeah, he, any defender you get, he's, his confidence is right up there. So yeah. he'll take on anyone at the moment. Not that we're uh, disappointed to have you on, Adrian. We're delighted to have you on. I think we were going to have Jackson on, but he was busy working. And uh, I, know well, that, I, think... I know that Matt worked very, very hard to come up with some questions for you. But tell us something weird about yourself. Oh, is there anything weird about me, yourself? Put me on the spot. Um, not really. Is there just, a pre-match ritual? Yeah, it's different? probably the only thing that wouldn't be weird because most people most people do it. But um, just the way I guess I get ready. Um, How do you get ready? Start from the socks up. <laughs> do you? Yeah, and then I like to be one of the last people out. The door running out. Yeah, out the door. So that's, that's about it, really. What do you like? What you you like to go out early or? I don't really think about it too much, but I just do get ready to play footy. Yeah, I do spend a bit of time on the massage table. So do you? Yeah, I guess yeah. With the deep heat. Yeah, yeah. The deep heat. Yeah, you can smell it. I mean, that's what's going on about you. footy. You go into you See, go into local footy club rooms, blackers, and you can smell it, and you know that you're ready. Even I, and I cannot play in the worst footballer known to man. I, I don't believe that at all. Dan. Oh, come on, blackers, you know that. Hey, Dan, what about old Hodgie? Stuff. He was up to his old tricks with um, a bit of deep heat. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He's a, uh, Luke Hodge, yeah, he's, a, he's terrific, isn't he, for, for the Brisbane Lions. Now, Leap Maholke kicked a couple to go to 71. He'll win the goal kicking, and we've, we've mentioned Jackson Calder, 2 to 56. Trent Dennis Lane, 147. Uh, one goal to go to 47. Sam Fowler, a goal to go to 42. Michael Fizzy's been pretty good uh, for... Or, pussy has been very good for the Edith Vale Aspendale Footy Club. I always get that name wrong. Michael Buzzy, third time round. Thanks very much, Plugger. Sorry, Michael. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been pronouncing his name wrong all year, but he's had a very good year for the Edith Vale Aspendale Footy Club. And uh, Aaron Edwards with a six-goal haul, which I think is a great sign for mm. the Pines in the lead-up to, to the finals. I think he kicked five or six against Sereno last time. I think Six played. he kicked. Yes. Yeah, but he did play on Ryan Potter, Potter in the second yeah, half. Yeah, who's playing when they, in had, when they had no key defenders. That's right. Yeah. The tips for the final round of the season, and again, Michael, uh, from Edith Val Aspendale, I apologise for not getting your name right. It's been an issue all year. Sorrento and Pines, match of the day, first against second. Who wins, Blackers? Um, I think Pines really match up well against them. I, I think the Pines forward line will maybe stretch Sorrento's back line. Um, Nick Marston's come back though since I don't think he played that last game, so he'll he'll take one of the key roles. Um, Sorrento's midfield is outstanding, and at, it is at Sorrento, but I still like what Pines are able to do against Sorrento. They match up really well against them. Yeah, yeah. look, I think Sorrento will win at home. I just think they're going to be better. Adrian? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Pines. Right, should be a really good game. Can't wait for Dramana against Mornington. Uh, where can you win this one, Adrian? 
Uh, I've just got to start fast. Um, hopefully put the score, bit of scoreboard pressure on and um, see if we can hold it from there, really. And you've got to play four quarters, don't you? Like, that, that's that, it. You're not you going know, to win no a game. Lapses, no lapses today and uh, on Saturday. And Dramato hard to beat at home, though, Dan, mm. as we know early oh, on the year. Very, very hard. I think we lost one game at home this year. Yeah. Mm. Very so, good side. I'm, I think Dramana for me. Yeah, I'd love to see Mornington do well to end the season on a good note. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, Dramana, I think. Thanks and YCW up against Bomb Beach. It is, of course, going to be a dress rehearsal for the elimination final. We've discussed this game. It is at Franks and YCW. You'd love to see Dramana, uh, sorry, Bomb Beach perform well. Love to see Dramana perform well as well. All teams performing well, but I think Franks and YCW at home. Sorry, Luke. It'll That's be a right. good game, mate. That's all right. Bomb Beach had a really good win against them early in the season, Dan. Yeah. And it was, um, I think it was past players' day and a premiership reunion day. Um, and they they did really well. I think it's a different YC outfit at the moment. And for that reason, I'm going for YC. Yeah, I'm going for YC, Adrian. Uh, yeah, I think YC as well. Rosebud and Frankston Bombers. Last game of the season for both these two teams. Uh, Rosebud maybe at home, but Franks and Bombers, as we've said, ending both, the season well. Both sides would really love to finish on a high and um, both have had inconsistent years. I think the Bombers are playing a bit better football at the moment, Dan. Yeah, I think they are too. What do you think, boys? Yeah, I think yeah, it's a bit of a flip of the coin, but I'll probably go to Rosebud. Yeah, I'll actually think Rosebud as well. Yeah, it's going to be very, very close, though. And uh, Eddie Asp against Mount Eliza. Eddie Asp at home. I think Stephen Milne is a guest speaker at a luncheon there on Saturday, which would be great for that football club. I think they can win their last game of the season, which you think or could be Graham Yates' last match. They've kept everything in-house. They're very good at it. Eddie yeah. Asp haven't heard any more news on that, Blackers, but they'd love to win the season on a good note. So would Mount Eliza. So that's a toss of the coin, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a toss, toss of the coin. I'm going to go for Mount Eliza. They've been in every game, Mount Eliza, this year. Mount Eliza in a close one. What do you think, Adrian? I agree. I reckon uh, Mount Eliza just. Pity ass for me, Luke. Mount Eliza for me. Should be a terrific game. Thank you, boys. Good luck, Luke, for the final game of the season and the finals. Good luck, Adrian, for the last game for Mornington. Thanks, Ash, for coming in, boys. I really appreciate it. Good on you, Blackers. We'll catch Thanks, you next Dan. week. Make sure you get your game face on. And, Michael, I apologise again for getting your name wrong. I'll get it right next time.